Hey guys, this is Goofer King Science, and today we're going to be looking at this old CRT oscilloscope with Jesse from Bitstream. Alright, let's hop into the video. So the oscilloscope that Jesse and I are using in this video is a BK Precision 1405 oscilloscope. This oscilloscope, in my opinion, is like a bare bones oscilloscope. It doesn't even have a trigger function. It's an older model, and it uses a cathode ray tube as a display. If you've been watching my channel for a while now, you'll know that cathode ray tubes are one of my favorite subjects, and I've even built my own in the past. So I figured for my half of the collaboration video, I'd actually do a teardown of this oscilloscope and talk about how the cathode ray tube inside of it works. On my channel, we'll be talking about what we're going to use this oscilloscope for, and the final project, and where this whole thing is going to go. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and tear apart this CRT oscilloscope. With the removal of six screws, we can take off the protective metal housing, and now we can easily see the guts of the oscilloscope. So just in case you didn't know, this long black tube here is the cathode ray tube, and this special piece of material that covers the front half of the cathode ray tube protects against magnetic interference and makes the beam image clearer. Back here we can see a very important part of this circuit, the power transformer. This power transformer steps down the voltage coming in from the wall socket so that it can be used by other parts of the circuit. So I decided to take the cathode ray tube completely out of this oscilloscope. This way you can have a better look at it and I can better explain how it works. So I've zoomed up here on the end of the CRT to show you this socket that connects the rest of the circuit to it. To completely remove the CRT from here, I'm going to have to disconnect the socket. With the socket removed, all that we have to do now is find the additional fasteners holding this oscilloscope in place and remove them. With that, the CRT is now disconnected from the oscilloscope. Now we can just sit back and admire this cathode ray tube in all of its glory. It's a fine specimen, isn't it? So I took some still images of this cathode ray tube, and this way we can take a closer look at its components and how it functions. This cathode ray tube consists of three major sections, the electron gun, the beam deflectors, and the phosphor screen. So in short, a cathode ray tube functions by accelerating electrons and slamming them into a beta reactive phosphor that produces light. These electrons are sent on specific paths using either electrostatic or electromagnetic deflection. The electrons begin this high-speed roller coaster ride over here at the electron gun. An electron gun does exactly what it sounds like it does. It produces high-speed electrons. The first component of the electron gun is the filament. The filament is a thin piece of resistive wire that heats up and becomes incandescent when electrical current is passed through it. This hot filament allows electrons to be emitted more easily from it due to the process called thermionic emission. With the filament all heated up, a high voltage potential is placed between it and a few other accelerating and focusing anodes in the electron gun. This high voltage potential between the electron filled filament and the anodes causes the electrons to jump from the cathode and be accelerated towards the anodes. This produces a high intensity beam of concentrated electrons which is exactly what we want for this cathode ray tube to work. Looking deeper into the cathode ray tube, we see that the beam next travels through these two angled plates. These are electrostatic deflection plates, and they are what control the beam's direction. There's actually a second pair of deflection plates deeper within the tube. The second pair of deflection plates is nearly identical to the first, except that they are 90 degrees rotated from each other. Together, these two sets of deflection plates control the vertical and horizontal deflection of the electron beam. The way that these plates work is actually quite simple. When a negative charge is placed on one of the plates, the electron beam is repelled by it. Since the electron beam is made of electrons, it has the same charge as the negatively charged plate, and this causes them to be repelled by each other electrostatically. In this way, the two sets of deflection plates are able to control the horizontal and vertical position of the electron beam. The journey of the electron beam ends here at the phosphor screen. This phosphor is a special type of phosphor that glows when it's hit by electrons. This produces the characteristic glow of this cathode ray tube oscilloscope. So now that we understand how this cathode ray tube works, we can go ahead and reassemble the oscilloscope and ensure that it's working properly. So now let's have some fun with this CRT. What's cool about this oscilloscope is that it allows us to individually control the vertical and horizontal deflection of the beam like I described earlier. In this way, we can input a function for the x and y coordinates of the beam, and the output acts like a parametric function. So in these shots, we are controlling the horizontal and vertical direction using X and Y coordinates generated by Jero Beam Fenderson in his album Oscilloscope Music. I'll place the link to his original videos in the description. 
Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you found it interesting, and I hope you learned something too. And special thanks to Jesse from Bitstream for collaborating with me on this video, and make sure to go check out his channel and watch the other half of this video where he describes what he'll be using this CRT display for. Links to Jesse's channel and his video on this subject will be in the description. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video.